Hello, divers. Welcome to another Sharan Bagora edition of Mysteries, Mysteries of, the of the Deep. This week, we'll dive into the story of the mystery behind the name of a town that's synonymous with the glitz and glamour of the motion picture industry. Mysteries of the Deep presents How Did Hollywood Get Its Name? It's a weird thing to ponder, how things get their names. You know, for us lowly humans, typically our parents give us our names. And as humans, overall, we give names to everything else. Plants, animals, bodies of water. We use people's names to name other things, like schools, streets, and businesses. The etymology of names is a fascinating way of exploring humanity's desire to have some control over our environment. We name to identify, symbolize, refer, describe, simplify, and organize. There was, however, one famous playwright who disagreed with that assessment. What's in a name? That which you call a rose. By any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would. Were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. Okay, so not to get into a beef with William Shakespeare, but names are incredibly important. And that's including the topic of today's podcast, Hollywood. Now, take for example... Pasadena. That's gooey pally hooly. Pasadena. Where any office boy or young mechanic can be a panic with just a good looking pan. And any shop girl. See what I mean? Doesn't have quite the same zing, does it? Nobody wants to go to El Segundo or Reseda to make it in showbiz. Now, the name Hollywood doesn't necessarily evoke the same feelings and emotions for everyone. Positive or negative, almost everyone knows that famous name. But how did the symbolic center of the movie industry get that name? Interestingly, there doesn't seem to be a total consensus on this. There are several differing accounts people tell about how Hollywood was named. So being that this is a St. Patrick's Day show, we're going to focus on one story that traces Hollywood, California's origins to a tiny village of around 100 people in West County Wicklow, Ireland. In the Irish native tongue of Gaelic, the village is called Keelan Hoiving, or in English, Hollywood. Now, the village itself most likely gets its name from the holly trees that surround the area. So, how do we get from a thousand-year-old Celtic village to the hills of Southern California? Well, according to legend, a local emigrant from Hollywood, Ireland, one Matthew Gerke, gave the name of his native village to the famous suburb in Los Angeles. Now, like much of Ireland, Hollywood was decimated by the potato famine of the 1840s. Like millions of others who were left starving and in abject poverty, the Gerke family was forced to seek a new life in America. After arriving in New York, Matthew worked as a blacksmith, horse breeder, and even scarier, a real estate agent. He began traveling west, eventually ending up in Southern California. While there, he built a home, bought a small racetrack, and started a community. He named his new homestead after the village where he was born, 
Hollywood. At least, that's the story that the folks in Ireland will tell you. It seems, however, that this story might be just a wee bit apocryphal. Many historians, along with the always reliable and never mistaken Wikipedia, <clears throat> tell a different story about the naming of Hollywood. The land that is currently occupied by the neighborhood called Hollywood was once home to acres and acres of fig and apricot trees. Near the end of the 19th century, a real estate developer named Harvey Henderson Wilcox purchased the land to develop as a residential area. Harvey's wife, Ida, named the subdivision Hollywood. So why Hollywood? Well, according to the story, Ida was taking a train back to her hometown in Ohio. During the journey, she met a fellow wealthy traveler who owned an estate named, you guessed it, Hollywood. Apparently, Ida loved the name so much, she chose it for her husband's new land development. On February 1st, 1887, the name was made permanent when Harvey Wilcox filed a subdivision map to the Los Angeles County Recorder's Office with the name Hollywood. Now, it would be another 25 years before the movie studios began setting up shop in the area. So what was it about Hollywood that made it so attractive to those early production companies? Well, the answer you hear the most seems obvious. It's, it's the area itself. Beautiful hills, mountains, and, of course, the weather were very attractive incentives to move west from the original center of filmmaking at the time, New Jersey. There was one other incentive a rather unattractive one. And his name was Thomas Alva Edison. Yes, the inventor. One of Edison's many inventions was the motion picture camera. Like most of his inventions, most of the credit for Edison's kinetograph goes to others who worked under Edison. But good old Thomas Alva owned the patents and he would go out of his way to enforce them, especially if other movie companies tried to use his cameras. Well, as it turned out, shooting in California, thousands of miles away from Edison and his lawyers, meant fewer complications. So to recap, Hollywood, great weather, stick it to Edison. Now, the famous Hollywood sign on Mount Lee, which, by the way, first read Hollywood Land, was erected in 1923 to advertise real estate, not the movies. But by the 1930s, Hollywood had been firmly established as the movie capital of the world. Yes, this is Hollywood, the city of the stars, the famous, the fabulous, the glamorous Hollywood. Have you ever wanted to visit Hollywood? How did you imagine it would look? More impressive? Had you expected bigger buildings? Or that it wouldn't somehow be just another city with hotels and department stores? Vine Street is known the world around. Did you expect it to be stupendous, colossal, gigantic? And not just a busy street like some of those in your own hometown? Had you thought of there being hills here? The Santa Monica Mountains. Visitors to Hollywood are likely to be a little disappointed at first. They usually haven't thought much about what to expect. When they drive down Hollywood Boulevard, they are surprised to find that it is very much like the streets at home. The same streetcars, buses, the same traffic, the same shops and theaters. No movie stars, no radio stars wander along the streets. Only the carpenters, electricians, musicians, writers, stenographers, technicians, and all the others whose work goes into the making of every picture you see. You wouldn't know these people by sight, yet without them, 
there could be no stars. So yes, Hollywood, California has the glitz and glamour and those weirdos in front of the Chinese theater on Hollywood Boulevard, you know, the ones who dress like Elmo and Superman and demand money if you take a picture of them. But hey, let's not forget about that sleepy little village in Ireland that just happens to be named, you know. They've become quite the popular tourist destination and have managed to carve out a bit of local fame within the film industry as a wonderful place to film in and of itself. In fact, the 1995 movie Michael Collins shot there, with lead Liam Neeson apparently being quite, no pun intended, taken by the locals in the village. The villagers have even erected their own version of the famous Hollywood sign on one of their many rolling green hills. So the sleepy Irish town may not have been an eponymous inspiration for its more famous American counterpart, but it's still a good story. And hey, what's more important in Hollywood than a good story? Don't answer that. Thanks for listening. If this is the first time you've heard this podcast, check out our past episodes and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. And we want to hear from you. Drop us a line at the deep dive podcast at gmail.com or on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter feeds. You can find links to those on our Linktree site, the Deep Dive Podcast by Automaton. And don't forget to check out our official website, the Deep Dive Podcast.com. All clips used in this podcast are meant for educational purposes only and not to infringe on existing copyrights. Mysteries of the Deep is a production of Automaton Studios. Hollywood, you want to come with us? Hollywood? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's strange, you just ran away. Well, move and run along, Fuzzy. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs>